Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to reporters here on France 24, France 24 in English. This week's reporter, Nicolas Germain. Great to see you, sir. Hi. Just back from Guinea-Bissau, a country perhaps better known for its problems. Coup d'état, corruption, one of the poorest countries in the world. There's also a rich cultural story which Nicola has been to find out about. It concerns the, the band Super Mama Jumbo. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Tell us the significance of this band. So Jumbo, what it means is the name of a spirit in Guinea-Bissau, which was supposed to protect the fighters who fought for the independence of the country against the Portuguese colonizers. And the members of the band, they were very close to these fighters, and that's why they chose that name. It's a remarkable story, as you're going to see Nicola German's film, Super Mama Jumbo, the soundtrack of Guinea-Bissau. Adriano Ferreira. Here, everyone just calls him Achuchi. He's a leader of the PAIGC, one of Guinea-Bissau's main political parties. We have a lot of work right now. The local elections are coming up soon. Before becoming a busy politician, Achuchi had a very different career. These are photos from different periods of my life. These were the leaders of the Mama Jumbo. That's Chico Caruca, who was on bass guitar. And that's me. I was the composer and the conductor. Super Mama Jumbo was Guinea-Bissau's greatest and most famous band in the 1970s and 80s. For more than a decade, it gave free concerts in front of large crowds across the country. File footage is rare. These pictures are from a Swedish documentary. State television has only existed since 1989. These young musicians embodied the hopes of the post-independence generation after the Portuguese colonizers left in 1974. But outside Guinea-Bissau, little is known about those highly successful years. So four decades later, we return to the West African nation to rediscover the heady spirit of the time. Dulce was the only woman in the band. She now works in a ministry and also has a solo career. People here still remember her as the famous singer from Super Mama Jumbo. Of course I know you. I saw you grow up. I know you well. <laughs> They're my fans. All the women in Guinea-Bissau are my fans. I really enjoyed those days. It was great. The atmosphere was good. It was after we won the war. Most of us, the majority of us, were into politics, into clandestine organizations. We were patriots. We would organize free concerts. The doors were open. Our songs denounced injustice. We wanted to raise awareness. We felt it was our duty. And we didn't make any money out of it. It was a social initiative. Super Mama Jumbo had close ties with the PAIGC, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea in Cape Verde. Its leader was Amilcar Cabral, known here as the African Che Guevara. He was assassinated by members of his own party in 1973. In 1974, Amilcar Cabral's brother Luis became Guinea-Bissau's first president. Mama Jumbo. President Luis Cabral really liked and appreciated Mama Jumbo. He liked to show us around. Sometimes he would ask a minister or an official to get off his plane so we could all get on. 
We joined him on all his official trips. We were with him when he went to Ghana. When he went to Congo, Mozambique, Angola, Portugal. Super Mama Jombo wrote a song that is regarded in Guinea-Bissau as the country's second national anthem, Sol Mayor para Comandante. It's played on the radio every time there is a coup d'état. As time went by, the hopes of the first era that followed independence began to fade. Supermama Jumbo started writing lyrics about poverty and government corruption. Some of these songs even got them thrown into jail for a few days. Since the original orchestra disbanded in the 1980s, things have become still worse. Guinea-Bissau has been racked by civil war and coup d'etats. Until recently, it was considered West Africa's drug trafficking hub. Things were so bad that Zimanel, a founding member of the band, left the country for 20 years. It used to be better. People used to be proud of this country. There was a real government. Ministers used to be responsible people. They would not steal money and risk jail. But today, they steal. They do what they want. No one bothers them. They are bandits. There are more bandits than serious people here, I swear. He returned to Bissau a few years ago to open this recording studio for the next generation of musicians like Tino Trimo. Mama Jumbo are a great band. We consider them to be a part of our national heritage. A national heritage that didn't take things too seriously back in the day. When you're young, you're carefree. You just live your life. You drink beer. No one challenged me back then. Otherwise, maybe I would have calmed down a little. But some people did tell me at the time, if we catch you being mischievous, we will slap you. One of the big problems we had was that Mama Jombo spawned some celebrities. Some of us became so popular that we created problems for the band. Some slept with the daughters of high-ranking officials. The president's daughter, his niece, the daughter of the president of the National Assembly. So the musicians were often hanging around outside the presidency. People said to us, be careful, you're pushing it a bit far, but you can't stop things like that from happening. Let me get my saxophone. If you want to sing, raise your hand. Miguelinho and Simba was once a leading figure in Supermama Jumbo. But the good old days seem far away now. He has suffered from successive bad governments. He is sick and lives with his extended family in this small house. What I could earn when I was in my 20s, I can't now that I'm 63. I don't have enough to buy a kilo of fish at the market 
or an aspirin. To survive, I have to play guitar in the bars. For example, for two nights a week, from 9 p.m. to 2 in the morning, I get between 15 and 30 euros. That's nothing, right? We fought for this country to move forwards so that our lives could improve. I have no regrets. I accomplished a lot, but there's no real recognition here. The original band never got back together, but the ones who stayed in Bissau have kept in touch. Sometimes they play together with younger musicians. They even toured Iceland a few years ago. One evening, as the sun set on Bissau, they met up to sing their most famous hit, Di Sanambera, Let Us Walk in Peace. The song lambas state vehicles that drive too fast and endanger ordinary people walking on the roadside. It was written a little after independence to denounce the early signs of corruption. Four decades later, it rings just as true. Our reporter Nicola Germain is still with us. Tell us more about this country, Guinea-Bissau. Well, it's a small country. You have less than two million inhabitants. And if you look at the map to the north, you have Senegal. To the south, you have Guinea-Conakry. And there's another country which is very important in its history, which lies 600 kilometers to the west in the Atlantic Ocean. It's Cape Verde. And the historical link is because you have the same movement, the same party that fought for independence in both nations against the Portuguese uh, colonizers. And it was led by Amilcar Cabral, who was the African Che Guevara. The African Che Guevara. It's quite a label to, to give this man Cabral. Now, in terms of what uh, the group and what Cabral wanted was great change and obviously a better deal for the people. And one gets the impression with Guinea-Bissau that hasn't been the case. Tell us more about the enduring problems the country has. Well, as we said, initially there were very high hopes. So when independence arrived, when the, the group was born, they were singing, uh, praising uh, the former fighters who'd fought for independence. And then gradually, as the years went by, there was more and more corruption, a political and economic crisis set in. And the members of the band, they separated in the 1980s. Today, Guinea-Bissau is one of the poorest countries in the world. Most of its revenue comes from exporting cashew nuts. And 10 years ago, uh, Guinea-Bissau was dubbed the uh, uh, drug trafficking hub of West Africa. The cocaine from South America that went to Europe always went via Guinea-Bissau. Today, it's less the case, but it's still uh, somewhat the case because, for example, when we were shooting the report, uh, one day I was with a local journalist and he told me, you see that man who's just crossed the street? He's a famous drug lord who's wanted by the United States. So you still have cases of drug trafficking today in Guinea-Bissau, even though it's a bit less than, say, 10 years ago. And the people, of course, existing on next to nothing and struggling to get food to put on the table. It's just a very sad state of affairs. The music, though, Super Mama Jambo, is something to smile about. Nicholas Report, you see it again by francefancat.com if you want, and of course you will, I'm sure. Let's go out then with uh, some of Super Mama Jambo, a bit of music for you to appreciate.